Hey folks, Coach Josh Wood down here in Hobart, Tasmania, and today we're talking sleep systems. So your sleep system is the combination of sleeping bag and mats that you may use on any backpacking adventure. Uh, let's start with what touches the ground. Let's talk about mats. So there are a number of options here. We've got closed cell foam mats. Whoop, everything's falling off the table. Slippery things. Uh, so this is a very basic nature hike. So this is one of the AliExpress uh, foldable accordion mats. These are not comfortable, but they're very durable. Uh, this has the reflective coating to give you a little bit more heat reflection. The main purpose of your mat is not just cushioning, but to insulate you from the ground. Without a mat of some sort or something underneath you, you're gonna lose all your heat into the surface below you. And if you're sleeping on dirt and ground, natural ground types, you're gonna lose a lot of heat. So not only do we want the cushion, we want something that's going to insulate us. Foam is actually a pretty good insulator. These types of mats are usually a bit cheaper, but they're not super thick. They're not gonna give you a lot of cushion. Uh, they're very durable and they're kind of warm. So I have this one for summer stuff, if you wanna be super light, because these are quite light, but they're bulky. I will almost never use this on its own. I will generally use something like this in a winter sleep system. And as you can see, this isn't big enough for my whole body, because what I've done is I've cut off another four panels that I use in the frame of my, well, in the back of my frameless backpack as a little bit of cushion, but also as an additional bit of torso insulation or something to sit on when I've stopped hiking. So these are pretty old school. They have purposes, but usually as part of a ground system or a sleep system in really cold weather. So when I've had to sleep on snow, I would take one of these because it's very waterproof and puncture proof and put it under an inflatable mattress. This here is another cheapo that I got off of uh, I think it's just AliExpress. And this is what I use in the floor of my tent when sleeping on snow. This is just a very thin reflective foam mat. It's sort of like an emergency blanket, but actually made out of foam. Uh, and this works wonders as an additional layer of insulation. This is a big one. Uh, and this works really, really well in the base of my tent. And so not only does it increase the life of my mat because it takes away the wear and tear of the mat on the floor itself or anything spiky that might end up there. But the reflective coating and foam adds a layer of insulation for really cold camping. That's about the only time I use these. Now, the two most common sleeping pads or sleeping mats that you'll see are self-inflating and inflatable. Big difference between these is gonna be durability and weight. The inflatable ones are very light and pack up very small. When this one's packed up, it's about the size of a Nalgene bottle. And it really doesn't weigh a lot, it's like 600 grams. This one here is much less thick, meaning less padding underneath you. The foam inside, it makes a good insulation. It does a really good job of preventing heat loss into the ground. Uh, but when this thing packs up, it's like this big around and this long and then it's still not as cushy and insulative as an insulated version of an inflatable mat. But if you get a puncture in one of these, it's still gonna have some value. It's still gonna add a little bit of protection from both heat loss and from the bumpy ground. These are usually cheaper as well. This is an old mat. I've got some that are thicker, some that are smaller. Uh, this is a fairly narrow rectangular one. When looking at mats, when you start getting into the inflatables, you'll notice that this has a taper to it, sort of like a mummy bag. You can get them square, you can get them tapered, you can get short ones, so the ultralighters may just use a torso mat and put their feet up on a backpack. But when we're looking at any mat system, you're gonna have to weigh up, literally, its weight versus its durability. This is one of the Sea to Summit ultralight insulated sleeping mats. And this is what my go-to is. This is actually my wife's. It's shorter than mine. This is a small, I use a regular. You notice it is tapered. So that saves weight and space inside a tent or whatever sleeping 
device you're using. This is a really nice one because as you can see, it's actually pretty thick and it comes with a bag that helps you inflate it. You inflate the bag and pump it into here. Now, these newer ones have the inflatable bag so that you're not breathing directly into the spout because if you get moisture in these, that's when you start to get mold growth. Uh, so using a bag that traps air, roll it to pump it in, and you can inflate in two or three puffs as opposed to sitting here trying to blow it up all day. Now, the ultralight insulated has a layer of reflective foil in it. So it's not actually got really much inside of it in terms of material. You can see with the lights here that there's some clear spots and some darker spots. Those darker spots are where the layer of reflective foil is like this. And this allows me to use it at least three seasons uh, and even in non-snowy winter seasons as a ground cover, not just for comfort, but for insulation, saving my heat loss. Uh, so this is a really nice one. They tend to get more expensive. There's a few other brands out there. Cedar Summit's pretty accessible most places. But the thing you're gonna have to weigh up is what shape and what size and then how late into winter you're going to use it. So how much insulation or type of insulation. Some of them actually have a synthetic or a down fill as well as the foil reflective heat systems. This can be a big weight saver. This is warmer and more comfortable than either of these. It's also much more expensive <clears throat> and much more fragile. One pine needle or pin prick through this and it's useless. If you can't find that and seal that hole up and then reinflate it, it loses not just its ability to keep you comfortable, but its ability to keep you warm. So this is always the trade-off, weight and durability. So I don't have any closed foam or self-inflating that I take backpacking. I have these around for camping type stuff, camping with the family, car camping. Uh, I have packed in this because it's a little bit shorter along with one of these for winter camping, but not often. So something to think about with mats, how big you want it to be. Do you want a square or rectangular one or do you want a tapered one? Obviously the less material, the lighter it's gonna be. That's about all you need to know about mats. Keep in mind, if you have an inflatable one, you want to keep some sort of repair kit, even if that's just making sure you have duct tape with you. Now, fun stuff. <laughs> Let's look at sleeping bags. And let's look at quilts. So we've got a few options here. <clears throat> let's look at why you would want a sleeping bag or a quilt, and then let's talk about the different types of each one you can get. So this is my winter bag. I'll use this in the winter. This is my three season quilt. This is a mummy bag. You can see at this end, it's tapered. So it's narrower in the foot box, wider through the shoulder. So this is a men's cut. Women's cuts usually have more space around the hips and then are narrower at the shoulders. And it has a fantastic hood with a draft collar massive draft collar. So this big old draft collar has a cinch in it and that cinches up around your neck and then you can put your head in here. It's fantastic. It's also got a slightly taller foot box so you can put a hot water bottle or your boots in there, a little bit of extra foot room. A lot of people aren't fond of the tapered shape, the mummy bag shape. We'll talk about that in a second. This is a quilt. It's a quilt because it's not a bag, which means it is open on one side. So these are designed to be used by strapping around your sleeping mat. The idea is when you are in a bag, you're compressing the material that creates the loft, whether it's down or synthetic, on the bottom, on the part that you're sleeping on. Compressed down has no insulative value. It doesn't help retain heat because it's compressed. What maintains heat or retains heat is the air trapped in the material, which is why we like things that puff up. They puff up, create a lot of space to trap air, keeps you warm. So why would you carry around something that weighs over a kilo if 
a third or half of the materials could be useless to you when you're sleeping in it. And that's why they came up with quilts. So the thing that actually protects you from the ground and the ground stealing all your warmth is the mat. And so a quilt is designed to strap around a mat and it has an open side. This is my three season quilt. Uh, this is from Tear Gear, handmade here in Tasmania. It is one of my most prized backpacking possessions. You can see how much it lofts. It's a minus four. Now, quilts often don't have hoods, which means you probably want to bring a hat or a hood uh, to keep you warm in the winter. It's got a nice draft collar. It's very, very light and fluffy. This thing weighs, what does this weigh? This weighs about 600 grams. It weighs about as much as a sleeping mat. Whereas my, this is a minus 10 though, minus 10 Mont Highland waterproof winter bag weighs a kilo. So I say 400 grams, different purposes though. Notice the quilt almost always, not always, but almost always will have an open foot box. And this allows me with this drawstring to open it up and poke my feet out in the summer. It's a great way to vent because it's too warm for most summer stuff, but the ability to vent makes it worthwhile. The bottom sort of from the hips down can snap up so I can create a closed foot box. The top is directly on the mat much lighter. This thing compresses also to about the size of an algae. Fantastic. All my things are down. All my sleeping bags are down. So why would you choose sleeping bag or quilt? Quilt is going to be lighter because there's less material. That's about it. You do it because it's lighter. You also could do it because it has more ventilation options. So it might be more comfortable in warmer seasons. You can get just as warm quilts as you can sleeping bags, but if you're not careful, you will get drafts in the quilt where you strap around the sleeping mat. Quilts are great too because they're strapped to the sleeping mat, meaning when you roll, nothing comes with you. You roll inside the sleeping bag or inside the sleeping quilt because the quilt is attached to the mat. So for people who are side sleepers, rollers and things like that, they're really comfortable because you just roll inside of it. Now, with a sleeping bag, you would choose a sleeping bag because you prioritize warmth above all else. They will be heavier. The nicer ones are more thinly insulated in the bottom because that insulation is not as good for you or not as useful to you. But this will be a warmer option. There will be no drafts. You cannot vent. The only place, well, you're not even going to really lose heat where the zipper is because you'll see there's a draft collar on the inside of the zipper too. So this will be the warmest option. A mummy bag is gonna be warmer than a square or a barrel bag because there's less space inside for you to have to heat up. The more space inside, that's why you want a form-fitting one, the more space inside, the more you have to heat up the inside, more space for you to heat up before it's warm. And then your body temperature is maintaining that warm air when really if you want to stay as warm as possible. You want it form fitting, you want air trapped around you, but you don't want to have to heat up as much inside space. So if you want to be warm, you get a mummy bag. If you want to be less warm, but potentially more comfortable, you might get something like a barrel bag. And this was my first backpacking bag. This thing weighs, geez, probably almost two kilos, 1.6 kilos. This is a barrel bag. And it might be a little bit hard to see, but you can see it's mildly tapered, broad, fairly long, well, fairly through the whole torso and hips, and then kind of tapers towards the end. This is a zero degree Celsius. I'm talking Celsius here, folks. Uh, this is a zero degree bag that I got from Mech Mountain Equipment Co-op in Canada. You'll see it also doesn't have a hood. This then is not gonna be as warm. You're not gonna have the heat retention through the neck and head. But for people who like to roll around a lot, it's probably second best to the quilt system. This has a lot of extra material and it has a lot more gap around the neck and it's not gonna be as warm as one of these. Now, you can see, again see the taper here. It's very narrow on the feet 
although it's quite tall at the feet with this one, and this is a Mott Highland. This has a waterproof exterior. So this material is waterproof. Should have done the infomercial thing and had the uh, water pour and drop off, but I've, I've had it tested, unfortunately, and it works very well. That said, waterproofing is not usually something that you have to worry about with a sleeping bag because it should be inside something that is waterproof when you travel with it. Waterproofing the bag itself is kind of redundant. So you don't typically have to worry about that. So if you have a waterproof option, it's a nice thing to have. It's not super necessary because most of the moisture is gonna be coming from you. And I've slept out cowboy camping style with this here in Tasmania in the winter. It was uh, minus three and I was lying outside on that mat with this sleeping bag. And what you start to see is that as the heat and vapor rises and wicks through the material, ice started to form on the outside. And then that would melt at some point, whether from my body heat or a change in outside temperature. And then that's where the waterproof membrane can become useful. In general, waterproofing sleeping bags is kind of not useful at all. What else can I tell you about this one here? So very, very warm. Warm because it has all the redundancies like the draft collars around the zipper, no ability to vent the feet, draft collar around the neck, and hood. That also makes it quite restrictive. A lot of people who are like side sleepers are worried about rolling and tossing and turning uh, don't like mummy bags. The thing is, no matter what the bag system is, you should be rolling inside it, not rolling with it. Because with these bags, there is less insulation on the bottom. And if you roll sideways, half the bag will be less insulated and half the bag will be very well insulated. You want to roll inside it so that you have the same insulation covering you at all times. And then you're not gonna get drafts, you're not gonna roll off your mat. Uh, and that just takes some practice. So sleeping bags, it's a few different styles. Men's and women's cuts do matter. If you want more space, always get a women's cut because that will be broader through the hips, allowing you to move a little bit more inside the bag. There aren't many barrel bags that I see anymore, but they can be found. Quilts are going to be the most versatile. They're going to have the best ability to vent and they're going to be the lightest weight. And you don't have to get a custom one, although I always recommend tier gear here in Tasmania. Uh, you can get one from Sea to Summit. I think it's Spark. I think they have a Spark series. Uh, and they've got some really great, really affordable entry-level quilts. I don't think the foot boxes will open up on those. But you'll have to double check. But that's a really good option too. And they tend to usually be the mass-produced ones a bit cheaper. So with the quilt, it's much more important that you have a very, very quality mat. I mean, it's always important but something that is comfortable. Now, the big question then is, well, what if you don't want to be touching the plasticky stuff on or this, this material on your skin or laying directly on the mat if you're using a quilt? It's a good question. So that's where liners and sleep clothes come in. So I've got a couple liner options here. This is a, I think it's a Thermarest thermal liner. This is awesome. So they say it adds like four degrees of warmth to your bag. I don't know about that. It's definitely very handy. There is some warmth added uh, and it's very soft and comfortable. I've had these, I've got two of these. I've had these for years. Great option, especially if you're using a quilt in colder climates. It's some sort of synthetic fiber. It's slightly, slightly fleeced, although mine's getting a little threadbare. So you can get thermal liners at a pretty good price that add a lot of comfort and warmth to any sleeping bag, but especially quilt systems. For summer, silk is the only way to go. So I believe this is Sea to Summit as well. Now this is a square rectangular silk liner. Now this is both rectangular and has gussets on it. So these elastic gussets, I probably wouldn't buy that again. Uh, it's a neat idea, but I'm not big enough that I need this thing to stretch, but it does allow it to move a bit more around in the sleeping bag and move around on your body a bit more. But if you're not sleeping with sleep clothes and you're just sleeping either in the nude or in your underwear, sleeping on silk is nice. 
It is very light, it's very comfortable, it breathes well, it feels good on the skin. And so I started using this as a guide, uh, and this is probably my favorite liner. Now I said this was rectangular. That's because you can also get mummy bag silk liners or synthetic liners as well. You can get liners in cotton, because this is not normally something that you're gonna have to deal with a lot of moisture with, maybe if you're a sweaty sleeper. But you want something that is comfortable against your skin, and even more important than your comfort is keeping your bag clean. Laundering sleeping bags is a hassle. It has to be done well, otherwise you'll ruin the fill. So having a liner keeps the sweat and grime of the day, because you're probably not showering every day after backpacking, off and out of your bag. So put your dirty body in a liner. Whether it's silk, whether it's rectangular, whether it's got stretchy bits, whether it's tapered, doesn't matter use a liner or sleeping clothes. So one thing I'll do in the winter, like I don't want to carry this extra, what, 300 grams of material if I'm backpacking a long way in the winter, I'll just sleep in my thermals. So I'll use a pair of thermal sleep clothes. I know people who in the summer just bring along like an oversized cotton t-shirt and a pair of sleeping underwear. So like a pair of cotton boxers or something because it's very light and breathable and comfortable. When you're sleeping, you're not sleeping out in the rain, you have a shelter, you have systems to keep you dry. Don't worry about your sleep clothes being the most high-tech fabric or have to be merino wool. You want them to be comfortable and you're only gonna wear them when you're asleep. So sleep clothes or sleep liner is always a great idea, not just for your comfort, but to keep your sleeping bag nice because you don't wanna have to wash them all the time. So when you're putting together a sleep system, Start from the ground, get a good mat. This is probably the most important thing for your safety and comfort. You can always wear more clothes to bed if you don't have a super nice sleeping bag. I've done it. <laughs> Did way too much cold weather camping with a 15 degree bag. Uh, 15 degrees Celsius is not, it's not warm. Uh, it's not a warm bag, so I just wore more clothes but if you have a nice mat, the ground is the big thing that steals your heat. Because it's not going to be the wind stealing your heat when you're in a tent or a tarp or whatever shelter you use, a bivy. So make sure you do spend a little bit and get a nice mat that is comfortable. I've had these mats for years. Uh, there is even a bigger one. I can't remember what it's called. One of the Sea to Summit ones. That's a 10 centimeter thick inflatable mat insulated. You can get really comfortable in inflatable and insulated mats now so find something that's comfortable go into the hiking or camping store lay down on some mats wiggle around roll over make sure it's the right size choose wisely you don't need a liner but if you get a liner good otherwise just have a clean pair of clothes to sleep in to keep your sleeping bag nice because this is one of the bigger investments when it comes to choosing a sleeping bag Decide if you want a bag or if you want a quilt. Understand what you need for the adventure you're going on and the terrain you're going to be in. Decide how warm you need to be. Decide if you're a tossing and turning sleeper. Choose a bag, choose a quilt. Decide if you want a mummy bag or if you want a barrel bag. Whatever you do, make sure that you've tried it out. You've sat in it or laid down in it in the store how to roll around, make sure it's comfortable and it fits. Now, these days, you don't see a lot of synthetic fill sleeping bags. So just like we talked about in the other video about layering systems, the big thing with synthetic and down is down is lighter, synthetic is heavier. Synthetic deals with moisture better. So if you're doing a lot of wet weather, Pacific Northwest stuff, you may want to go synthetic. It doesn't pack as small either. Down will pack smaller, it will be lighter, but it doesn't do well with moisture. It clumps and it loses its loft. The same amount of synthetic fill won't loft as much. So you kind of have to weigh those two up. Most fancy sleeping bags, not sorry, not most. There are some sleeping bags that use waterproof down, which means they will be more expensive, but that down won't clump as much if you're in a wet environment. A waterproof liner, it's on the outside. Most of the moisture that we're dealing with when sleep in sleeping bags is the moisture that comes off of us during the night. 
So it's a useful thing if you want a more robust bag that you might have to be sleeping outside with, then a waterproof exterior is useful. But in general, go down, protect your down. When you pack it in your backpack, make sure it is in a waterproof bag. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Half the time I just use garbage bags, but you need a waterproof bag or liner around your sleeping bag when you pack it and then just get what you like. There's no right or wrong way to do things. Just play around with gear. If you get something secondhand, it's not such a <laughs> terrible thing then if you have to sell it on. If you can try friends gear, if you can rent gear, test things out before you buy them. At the very least, go into a shop and get in the sleeping bags, lay on the mats. If you can, try out the liners and then you're gonna have a much better understanding of what works for you. Because it's all about you and you gotta hike your own hike. So folks, if you have any more questions, feel free to hit me up. Again, Coach Josh Wood down here in Hobart, Tasmania. And this has been everything I could think about for sleep systems.